everybody, and welcome back to the Chaluminati Podcast, episode 203, I think. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Mike Martin, today joined by, wait a minute, where's your, where's your number two, where's the twin, where's the, where's your comedy duo, Alex? He's OOT, it's just me, on your TV, you see? What is that a reference to? Just rhyming, just uh... Oh, okay, I, see, for me, <laughs> it could be a reference, or it could be completely made up and it would hit me all the same so just just a little just just a little just a little freestyle for you off the dome just a little, oh, little. you're good man you're good we kind of have a third here dean is here in spirit we can see him you can't we can uh he's cute don't worry and but uh you know he's kind of just know he's there and he's kind of like he's like mark in D. if anybody remembers that old old like 2006 D like youtube sketch where the player isn't there but they have to use his character anyway. And so Mark always shows up, but he just stands there silently swinging his axe. It's like Dean. He's there with his editing axe. Add the Mark sketch from however long ago that is to the list of things that Mathis has seen. I, well, if it's on the internet, I probably saw it. <laughs> but if it was online, there's a good chance my eyes came across it at least once. You, <laughs> I don't like for good or ill. I don't like my eyes came across it. Yeah, I couldn't control it. Uh, oh, my God. All right. Uh, well, it's true. Jesse's out of town. He's OOT, Ocarina of Time. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom came out today while we're recording this episode. I have been. Oh, is that the secret reason he's not here? No. Can you imagine if he was like, no, I just want to play Zelda. <laughs> we have sourced. Well, Mathis has sourced. I, I have no idea what these are about to be. Uh, some listener stories for the first time in about three months again, three just months, about three or so months. Um, Once it's a, a mix, season, though. we're not just doing listener stories. We're actually going to mix in a little of uh, a little news at the beginning as well. You know, that's right. It's just a me and you day, Alex. You know, we've only got I like that. We've only done this one other time. Yeah, we're just hanging out. We're like 200 episodes at the point where because we had episode 3.5. That was you and me, but no Jesse again. And we're yeah. like at 203 now. It's, it's pretty much 200 episodes on the dot. Yeah. From when later. Jesse missed his. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. That's Crazy. a good, that's a good record though. Like, I think that's so pretty too. solid. Well, I mean, you know, there are times we've had, we've all missed it, but that was many so compilations. You know, what happens. I missed one. Yeah, I did too. I was that whole Texas movie. There was the Crendor one. Remember that one? Were you not there for that one? There was the one where Crendor like told some story about me that about like, oh, <laughs> the yeah. first time he met you, yeah. like you were in a car and you pulled out a joint or something. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like... something like that. And uh, I don't know. I wasn't there. You'll be able to ask him to his face soon. Uh, a little hint. We'll have Crendor returning. In the next month-ish. A little Chiluminati Direct going on right now? Is that what's up? A little Chiluminati Direct. Alex, you, I, I don't know how you segue from where we are to Patreon, but you got to do it. Well, it's already been done. Head over to patreon.com slash Chiluminati pod. We've been talking about it for about 40 minutes off camera. Just how we, we, we care about it. It's important to us. This thing that you do for us by coming and supporting us there. It's an earnest. Penny. It's an earnest exchange. Your support literally directly makes the show happen. We, we went, became a weekly podcast directly as a result of the Patreon. Like you guys are truly the lifeblood. This is our job. We think about this all the time. Why do I barely ever do episodes? And then when I do, they're four episodes long mm -hmm. because that's how long it takes. It's a lot of work. That's how much time we put into this. That's why there's three hosts and a researcher on the side who helps us bring all this shit together. It's a big deal. People forget that you do other things outside of Chiluminati, you know, like I can do a lot of episodes because it's the only thing I do. But you have like other things going on. I got to I got to jam it in. I got to jam it in. It's a big thing, uh, you know, and uh, we got art that trumps all art. On any other Patreon, where you get free art, we got the best art. Just just check out Studio Electro on Instagram or Twitter, man. I love her. Like, why don't you go have a goddamn look at it, dude? She's got like a, a like a, that '90s grunge aesthetic and like that psychedelic color scheme. I, I wanted to do it. every show poster that I ever have to look I, at. I, that's that's the plan. Yeah, forever. I just mean for every show, for everyone, forever, forever. Yeah, I mean yeah. I'm down. She's in a, she had to ask some stuff for sale through Hot Topic as well. So, like, go support her. Ultra legit. Not to mention Rotten Popcorn, another podcast within a podcast. Podcastception, an archive of movie commentary. Some of the worst movies that I've ever seen uh, brought to us by the movie guy in the group, Mathis, who has seen all these movies uh, that nobody else has seen. He's got like, all the deep cuts. That's a misconception. I haven't seen these either. I know of them. Okay, yeah, well, he's got his weird little chest of of unholy 
tapes that he trots out. It's true. It's like a chest with duct tape. It's got like a, a brain piece of melters. paper that's got some slobber dried onto it. Yeah. But these are like f- uh, uh, movies to watch with friends locker that I've been holding on to for years and years. And it's I, like a creepypasta just that we are experiencing in real time. Yeah. I finally made friends. A clockwork orange. I'm going to pry your eyeballs open. It's the salad fingers of mystery science theaters. That's what it is. No, that's, you know what? <laughs> Patreon.com slash Chilluminati pod. Patreon.com slash Chilluminati pod. Patreon.com slash Chilluminati pod. What the heck is going on? What's up? What's the news? No Jesse here. So we can speculate wildly without any punishment. And I'm very excited. No, no, we're not going to do anything super crazy like that. There's a couple of things that are happening in the world that are rather interesting and to know. And especially since last week and last episode, we really did a big update on where the UAP sphere is in the world. Uh, the videos that have come across, which has been awesome to watch people discuss in the comments on both Spotify and on Reddit. By the way, if you're on Spotify, there's comments now. They're like, go ahead and drop. So we, we always leave a question for you to answer at the end of every episode and follow us on there as well. There's, there's the, 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 the public perception of that video is everything from people thinking it's a missile, uh, that's, which is a pretty common thought. If you don't think about it too much, yes, it looks like a missile. Yeah, I've seen missiles and cruise missiles m- in the way they move, and it is very close and similar. Um, it's just, it just doesn't really fit this. It, I don't know. It doesn't look like one. There's even people who think it's a bug close to the lens, but that's weird because it, it goes behind the clouds. So I just don't think that works. The one at the bottom left of the video, much more likely a bug. It doesn't even, yeah, like it, it, it's very possible that's the, a bug. The thing is, right, it's possible that they're all bugs. It's but, possible. But it's unlikely. It's more at likely it, a missile than a bug. What I mean is looking at it and looking at a lot of these types of pieces of footage, this one has a characteristic to it of sort of legitimacy in terms of the footage is really high quality and like the camera is static and it's like definitely nested in uh, 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 something else that wasn't just a guy sitting out looking for ufo footage right yeah it's definitely like there's much too much work around the ufo part of it for it to be all a contrivance just to hoax this footage onto the internet so it's everything we've ever asked for out of a ufo video which is why it's immediately suspect right exactly i get it because yeah so many of those videos are just hoaxes because it's too perfect but it's a dude who wasn't trying to catch it we got the raw 4k file which is also unheard of on these videos it's everything we want the guy is not sure and we are not sure and so that's why it's interesting that's all exactly like i don't know I don't know what it's li- most likely to be. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a like bird expert. I'm not a missile expert. I'm not a. And anybody in the comments who, who are d- d- saying like, it's definitely this or as qualified as we are <laughs> to be saying these things. Yeah, exactly. Like I can say what I think it is. And all I can, and I think the only thing that's valuable for me to say is that as somebody who looks at a lot of these things and cynically, like uh, famously looks past things that maybe immediately make you believe that something that uh, is obviously fake, right? Just for the sake of Mm -hmm. entertainment. That's like kind of my thing. If you think about it, I'm not willing to do that with this clip because this clip looks really good. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, I'm not claiming to say it's, you know, an alien or anything like that. It's just the video is interesting and there's zero way for me to tell you with certainty that it's a missile, a UFO, a fucking bird. Um, all I can see is what's in front of me, and we have the raw file to really look at it, and it leaves me going, huh. <laughs> That's really it. Like, yeah. all, I, all I can see is what's in front of me, and it's a tiny little metal choo-choo train without no tracks flying around through the sky. And, it's, and every time choo-choo train is what you say. I, it looks like a little choo-choo train, and that's that. Why choo-choo? Why choo-choo I can't train? explain it more than that. It, it does. <laughs> okay, it just fine. does. It's a little choo-choo train. It's a lil choo-choo train, if we're being it really specific. a lil choo-choo train lil with an apostrophe yeah well i bring that up because i also uh, over the course of last week and this week uh another video that has made the rounds before of a classic triangle shaped ufo um was somebody took the effort to stabilize the footage uh and you get a very good look at it that's not the raw if you've ever seen the raw footage it's shaky as shit it's like so hard to see like it looks real but it's like man the dude has a hard time like just keeping it and maybe the I, if this if, if this is real the excitement would probably have me reacting very very similarly it's the black triangle ufo on a camera uh stabilized and i want to kind of look at it with uh you again and i will 
do everything I can to fucking remember to put this link on day one underneath every episode. It's only a minute long. It's basically a guy grabbing his, like, clearly ran inside to grab his phone, hit record, and now he's, like, running to his window, and he's just catching a freaking, what is essentially the, the, the... Again, like a Holy Grail-esque. Yeah, it's the pure description of what you always hear, which is a silent black triangle. Sometimes it's hovering, sometimes it's just quietly moving. I will say, I will say the angle of the triangle is a little bit different than what I would expect. Yeah, like, so... It, you'd think that the triangle would be flying like an airplane in most of these stories because that's how you always see it. Yeah. This one looks like it's kind of like hover like laying on the top of the earth like a the earth is a sphere with the triangle pointed towards the center like a mm. like like starro yeah that's an interesting way but a good way to explain it um it's just hovering there it's got the three bright lights on each corner with a red light in the middle and it looks like it's slowly rotating it looks like it's looking around like show me what you got like it's like really like it's looking at the earth the the, the lens flares i'm trying to determine like they are three different oh yep yeah, it's moving it's rotating now in the video yeah like kind of like looks like a head right yeah a little bit and then what ends up yep there it goes and so it does What's also in that is the the uh, what you hear a lot of people who say they see UFOs is the instant acceleration, the acceleration that would literally splatter a human against against the back wall. That's what's fascinating, like impossible looking. Yeah, yeah. It, like it is. Imp- yeah, there's another one. Uh, the Gulf Breeze sightings, which we'll discuss in a full episode one day, also has that. And there's again that in, from 1994, it's a video of what looks to be an orb in the sky hovering and then it just takes off in a way that just looks unnatural. I do wonder, it looks great. It is, again, a holy grail. The acceleration part looks a little fake. Could that be CGI, though? Of course. Like, the other thing is more, is was the, like, the little tic-tac was di- more of a difficult thing to pull off because it needed to interact with the background the way it did, which was with clouds and stuff. This is a clear sky at night where he's... And it has, like, uh, vi- yeah, skin of a rink look to it also. Yeah, but... Now, if we look at the video footage not stabilized and then have taken to effect that he'd have to have to like put the effect in post his shaking. And this is we're only seeing it clear like this because somebody in the in, in uh, the afterwards stabilized it. How much more difficult does that become for somebody to like create that effect while also holding a very shaky camera? I don't know. I don't know how to do these things. Dean has a little bit more experience in that sphere. Uh, do you have any idea? Like, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. With that shaky cam, that's very hard to just like, just do as like a whim. Yeah, that's what I figure. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll link the stabilized one. I can go look for the non-stabilized one, but it's pretty easy to go find. I don't have it on me. I think you could move the camera in, a, in an engine in real time. Pretty that's true. You might be able to move it in an engine. A lot of the time when you look at uh, things like Unreal, especially F- Unreal 4, which is a lot less photorealistic than Unreal 5 is, uh, a lot of the time, if you just take uh, kind of like a steady cam to it and move it a little bit, it will very much legitimize the look of something that's obviously fake when it's still. And in this case, you know, with a little bit of diffusion and a little bit of like, filters they've kind of maybe occluded the like clear rendering artifacts that might be there i don't know like if i'm being as cynical as possible but the only part of this that really like if it's real first of all it's the best thing that anybody's ever filmed right like it's that's the one problem with it is that it's like so good again that's the thing it's it's so good looking if it's if it's real and the acceleration at the end kind of just looks like a guy wiping his hand away. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Um, it's, uh, I tried to find the TikTok it came from, but that count is now gone. It's deleted. God damn it. And I'm just like, I wanted to see what other kind of content he posted to see if this fits a theme of what he kind of posts. But nope, it's gone. Uh, and the YouTube channel that it references is also gone. So I, there's no way to, t- to look at like what kind of content the, the guy posted prior to this. It came from TikTok. That's all we know. Uh, and then this, this stabilization is post TikTok. But I urge you to go look at it either way, even if you want to you know, take a non or semi-educated guess as to what it would be. It's, as sure, it's just worth talking about in the context of like our computer graphics. What's happening now? Well, like our computer graphics getting too good for us to be able to oh, tell yeah. whether things are fake anymore, especially things that are like low quality. Like this is such a head scratcher, right? Like it, it's too much to swallow if it's real. 
Thank you so much to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's episode. I am actually almost out of ButcherBox meat. I am gonna have to buy some more just so uh, ButcherBox knows, hey, if you're hearing me, uh, it was absolutely delicious and I think the ribs were my favorite. Anyway, uh, I'm very bad at picking out meat. So having ButcherBox be able to give me high quality fresh cuts of meat that get delivered directly to my door, minimal needing to go anywhere. I literally just step out into my porch and then walk to my freezer, bing, bang, boom, done. I absolutely love it. It's impossible for me to find fairly priced meats at my local grocery store, but with ButcherBox, I don't have to worry about any of that. The peace of mind, knowing that I'm gonna find high quality meat and seafood that I can 100% trust with 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free and wild-caught seafood, humanely raised with no antibiotics or added hormones. I mean, what else are you looking for when you're trying to buy good meat out on that market? That's what ButcherBox is for. Just go to butcherbox.com. High quality meats, the convenience of being delivered to your doorstep and delicious food every single time. I don't see why you wouldn't at least give it a try. And luckily, ButcherBox is giving all of our listeners a special deal so you can go give it a shot. If you sign up today using code CHILL, you get to receive ground beef for a year plus $20 off your first order. That's two pounds of ground beef free in every box for a year plus $20 off of your first order when you sign up at butcherbox.com slash chill and use code chill at checkout. That's butcherbox.com slash chill. Use promo code chill and get a year of ground beef and $20 off your first order. Thank you again to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's episode. It, it's too much to swallow if it's real. Yeah. Like even for me, it's too much to swallow if it's real that somebody just happened to film this once finally. Yeah, it's it's literally just it's like you said at the very beginning of this it's the holy grail of footage it's almost displaying consciousness it's like it looks sentient like it's like looking around looks like the eye of sauron it, yeah and that's what's crazy and i'm like i'm looking at like their responses to the people who are watching the video and it's just like people are like cleaned up like this it looks more convincing to me so and the way he sounded scared at the end it's bizarre it there's also somebody's like maybe it feels like semi not real because it's just something that you know that's not from here i don't know man i don't know it's just a great video to go look and make you think even if it's it's a yeah it's a it's a wild it's a wild age for ufos because footage is becoming less and less reliable yes yeah yeah man especially with the rise of ai and how quickly and rapidly it's improving we're yeah. going to enter an era where it's going to be impossible uh you just have to know your sources and even then like you might not be able to trust all it's of impossible. them. It's impossible. It's going to be so bad soon. It's going to be like we might as well give up soon. We're kind of sticking within that sphere of news though and kind of you know, again go watch the video. I just think it's worth seeing and we're just, you know, we walk away saying what we said about the last thing which is just I don't know man, it's hard to know. It's really gorgeous footage. But we we didn't talk about it last week and I meant to the huge amount of suspicious cow mutilations that also happened last week. That oh, yeah. Was made the mainstream news, NBC, ABC, see it like everybody was talking about. It happened in, in Texas, just a bit north of me. It's not far from me when it, where it happened. You should get out there, man. I, yeah, I'll just walk up to this man's property who absolutely would have a shotgun and might blow me away if it happened. Head out there with the H4N, dude. See what he knows. Uh, let me I'll read you a bit of the news clip here as we get going. Um, but basically, author <clears throat> this comes from USA Today. Authorities are baffled by a recent mystery that has occurred among cattle herd along the same Texas highway. Several dead cows with select body parts missing. After the unexpected death of a cow in Madison County near College Station, about 100 miles north of Houston, the local sheriff's office has confirmed that an investigation is now underway to determine what's behind a series of similar cow deaths along Texas State Highway OSR. According to the release from the sheriff's office, the six-year-old cow was found dead, lying on its side and missing its tongue. Quote, a straight, clean cut with apparent precision had been made to remove the hide around the cow's mouth on one side, leaving the meat under the removed hide untouched. The news release stated, quote, the tongue was also completely removed from the body with no blood spill. Law enforcement further stated that there were no signs of struggle or tracks, adding that the grass surrounding the deceased animal was undisturbed. Ranchers had also reported to officials that the cow was left to decay for several weeks with no interest from predators or birds to scavenge the remains. During their investigation of the local cow's death, Madison County authorities discovered five similar incidents in the bordering Brazos and Robertson counties, each from different herds and pastures. Quote, the other cows were found in the same condition, lying on one side with the exposed side of the face cut along the jawline and the tongue once again 
completely removed. The Madison, that's from the Madison County Sheriff's offices. Two of the cows had their genitalia and anuses removed, though they had the same, quote, circular cut with the same precision as the cuts noted around the jawlines of the others. Akin to the first, there were no signs of struggle or dis- disturbance in nearby grass, and the cause of their deaths remain unknown. Similar incidents have acro- occurred across the country, authorities stated, and they are actively coordinating with other agencies to find uh, answers. They talk a little bit about similar things. The, in spring, in April alone in 1975, uh, they 196 cows were found in, the, in the, such a state. So this is stuff that's been going on, obviously, for decades and decades the and decades. Thing is, don't... The last bit is all of the cows were desanguinated. No blood in their systems at all. But this is, okay, have we not covered this? A bit. And, and isn't the answer that every single time they, like, play up the weirdness and it's like, the anus is missing, the reproductive organs are missing. The tongue is missing. Yeah. It's so unnatural. How could somebody do this? And then like a few years later, it's like, it's just decomposition and some kind of, of some kind of scavenger animal. Well, that's, that's something that we've, we've posited. It's never been uh, ever like officially said. That's something that just makes sense. The, the difference in the problem is now is that these all happened along the same route, all along the same. There's no disturbed grass around any of them. No signs of struggle, meaning no splashes of blood. And instead of, it's not like the, the parts of them have been ripped out. They're surgically cut. Right, right. I mean, I, I hear it. Like, I hear the evidence. I understand, like, what makes it, like, a little well, bit more interesting. I think you're, you're running into the problem so many people run into when they hear about this thing is it's, it's so ridiculous. What is, it doesn't make any sense. Well, like, it's not just. Who gives a shit about cows? Why cows? Well, but not even that. It's just like, it's just like, this sounds exactly like when I go back and look at one of these stories that ends up just being Mm -hmm. most likely it was just decomposition and scavengers. It's like, they literally say things just like this, no blood, like, no, like it's removed surgically. So like, that's the thing that's vexing about this is it's like, is this a special version of this that we've never seen before? That just seems like that old thing. And I'm like letting my like preconceptions get the best of me. Or am I just seeing through the bullshit a little bit and this is just going to be another case of cattle mutilation in 10 years? I think, I think for me, I sit on the opposite side of you. I think with the first one, the fact that the cow was left there for a several weeks and no predators came and ate it. There's no bits torn off, no chunks of meat ripped away from the bodies. Just- so when was the, when was the tongue removed? Like what in the, when in the timeline was the tongue removed? I imagine they are the, the it would be at the time of death. Again, it's not it's it, it would, the issue isn't that like these parts are missing. It's that they were missing with a weird, clear cut. Well, right. Not like a torn away flesh. I'm with I'm right there with you. But yeah, the thing that's weird about the story to me is that they're like after a few weeks, the animal never was touched outside laying there dead. And in my mind, I'm like, it doesn't really make clear when the cut like. Was the sure. was the tongue removed after it was decomposed, or was it? Did they know it was there dead, and then the tongue was removed? Oh, I, or they I don't saw think that they, the tongue was removed immediately, and then they just left the body there for a few weeks. That's that's a good question. I don't think they know. I don't think that's, that's like the that thing that's, the answer. You know, it, that's a thing that's weird about it to me. Is like, how yeah. are they talking about clean cuts and skin removed, but also talking about it being decomposed? I, I would imagine it's like if an animal is tearing at it, it would be like a ripped edge and like uneven and like torn, like teeth and claws were tearing at it. Where it's pro- even in decomposition, you could probably tell if something's relatively smooth and, and like precise. If it was, this was just one. I'd be with you a little bit more, but it's six. If the evidence is true. In different if, fields and different farms. Yeah. And, and, and like I'm saying, if the evidence is true and real, it is significant. It is outside the norm. It is too much to be like the same yeah. as these other things, right? But right yeah. now I'm in this point where I'm, I'm at this point where I'm like, I feel like we'd be hearing more about this or something if it wasn't just the same type of type of one. I want to check back in on this story in like two months and see what happens with it. I agree. Oh, I agree with you. Because that would really right now it even it being like this one's different. That's like a hallmark of the cattle mutilation stories. It's like sure. Yeah. So I for me, that's why I'm like, huh. Yeah. What's weird to me is that the for some reason the mainstream media decided it was worth talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. That's because like these happen uh not I want to say all the time, but they they happen enough where 
you know, smaller little like local newspapers are usually the things that are covering this. That's where local news stations is usually where you catch the interviews. Yeah. Very rarely do you see national news, every yeah. major news outlet covering the, the, this one. It's, it's very strange. I think it's true organic virality that that brought this to the forefront. I think like yeah, maybe it was just interesting enough of a story in each time that it was reported that it got picked up again and again because i i too feel drawn to this one i too feel the the glimmer of like maybe this is like not quite the same cattle mutilation like maybe this is do you think you feel that way because this is being brought up in a time where there's a lot kind of coming forward that just leaves a lot in the air and questionable like there's nothing even really to connect this to ufos right now right like not really no other than people's assumption like nobody's seen one right having like around this so like i don't know but like it feels like uh you know when charlie brown is about to kick the football (laughs) yeah yeah and then they're gonna take the football like i feel like i'm oh dude i'm with this one like that's the thing that's how i want to describe it i like the evidence i like the story i understand what makes it interesting Mm -hmm. and yet i still feel like i'm charlie brown willfully having lucy put the football down for me (laughs) because i i really think she's gonna let me kick it's fine i will be charlie brown every time I guess. I mean, and I and with I will run with the same enthusiasm is, and the same expectations. Doesn't feel and great. One day Lucy isn't going to move that goddamn ball, or I'm going to rip Lucy's head off and punt her head. Myself. But there's a reason Charlie Brown is ultimately a tragedy, is because he never, he, he doesn't <laughs> ever, he never changes. He just continues to be the guy who gets the pu- the football pulled away every time. You know what I mean? I know, and that's okay. Some sometimes that's just got to be your role. Some in people, life. some people just love imagining that they can play football. Sometimes people need a person to look up to that always has hope even if it's dumb and pointless yeah and i'll be that you're basically person. superman fine. yeah i, I like am that, yeah. i'm superman with a gun specifically yeah, okay yeah well to wrap up the ufo stuff uh the last thing i wanted to talk about is the subreddits of the ufo and ufos and all this stuff oh have my god yes all con- con- <laughs> all have decided something f- spectacular that i am absolutely going to participate in we, yeah we tried we tried something like this once before but maybe that maybe the answer was that we, there just wasn't enough of us i mean well yeah that was back in that like 80 something that's what i'm saying maybe MIB. maybe yeah. we've grown maybe. maybe the whole ufo subreddit can join you know us us glomming on maybe we can finally make this happen what are they calling it? A mothership day because it's happening on Mother Day, Mother's Day. So yeah, on Mother's Day, in, in a day from when this episode goes live tomorrow, what they're doing is they're going to make an attempt by all kind of essentially group think uh, an, uh, of a, a UFO over Phoenix, Arizona. The perfect it's place. It's going to happen on Sunday, it's happened before. May 14th uh, at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, MST. That's whatever UTC is minus seven. Uh, so they're everybody's going to essentially group think and see if any sort of weird consciousness idea can manifest manifest and what we're going to get is one dude with a shaky video that sees a tiny orb zip away this could be the last episode of the chiluminati set in a world where aliens aren't real for sure yeah yeah what how high are your hopes that this is going to work out um i think i'm just going to go see i'm going to go hang out with my mom you know i think i'm just going to go have some sausages with my mom. 4 p.m. For now, 4.30, 4 p.m. I'll do it. Look, I'll set the alarm. I'll set the alarm and I'll manifest. I'll get my whole family yeah, yeah. to do it just, just for a few minutes at least. I should, yeah, I'll have to, I have to have Siri set me an alarm. So how long are we supposed to go for? No time. No, no specific, like, how long we do it. Just manifest we at just, that time and just Just see. manifest at 4 p.m. Okay. Until you pass out or the news breaks that there's a UFO over. This could be it. This could be all we need. This could be it. Get ready for Mothership Day. I'm ready. Are you ready for Mothership Day? No, I don't think you can be ready for Mothership Day. If this happens, can you imagine? No, no one can. No one can imagine. Nobody knows. No, it's, it's true. Nobody knows. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm excited. We'll see. I don't think anything's going to happen, surprisingly, but uh, I'm going to do my best to create a reality where the aliens just show let's up. Get a, let's get a post going in the, uh, in the subreddit. We can all check in. Because here's what I'll tell you singularly thinking about it every single night hasn't yielded shit for two to three years <laughs> so it's only been two to three years we've been doing this podcast Five in years. the way we've been doing it well yes so halfway through the pod you decided that like the secret was true and that you wanted to yeah that was it it was right around the mib era <laughs> uh all right here you go alex we're gonna read a couple of stories off the reddit and this one is for you specifically because of i think you even commented on the story to the poster uh, let me go ahead and I sent the link to you. Oh, and don't worry uh, about Jesse and his dream readings. Uh, I'm going to do a dream episode fairly, sh- fairly Ooh. soon about some dream related things. And we'll get some dreams uh, for Jesse to interpret during that episode as well. So don't worry. 
Thank you to Talkspace for sponsoring today's episode and just genuinely being a longtime partner with our show. And hey, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and Talkspace, the leading virtual therapy provider, celebrates every effort you make to improve how you feel and how you live. Even a small step can make a big difference. If you've been working on your mental health or if you would just want to make progress towards a mentally healthier place, then Talkspace is here for you. And that small step making a big difference I can attest to from experience. When I first started therapy, I just thought I'd be talking about, you know, nonsense surface level stuff. And fast forward after two or three sessions and I'm actually addressing some stuff that I didn't know I even needed to talk about and how important that stuff is, but it made my life, it just changed my life. That's all I can simply say. I cannot list the amount of things that have changed in my life because of having therapy. The big thing that I love about Talkspace is that it's not only accessible, but it's also affordable. If you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one to meet with them or afford them, try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made very easy. Therapy can help shift your perspective in life. Find tools to cope in difficult times and just genuinely being a good guiding light. And to celebrate May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month, and to celebrate every step you take toward better, richer, fuller life, Talkspace is offering every listener of this podcast $100 off your first month with Talkspace. All you have to do is go to Talkspace.com slash chill. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash chill to get $100 off of your first month and to show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash chill. This one is called Avely UFO Abduction Continued UFO Sightings. Uh, this is by Emma's you, Brain Hurts. I'm sorry, Emma. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, you're going to be all right. I had to post this as it was too much of a coincidence not to. Sorry about my writing. I'm a chronic rambler. Absolutely fine to read on the podcast if you want. As I sat in my window seat flying back to see my parents in the UK, I mentally prepared myself to finally listen to The Greenstone Part 3 as we took off. Arguably, some would say the best episode of The Greenstone. It was an honest to God, it was an excellent episode. And I, I had to change the title of it due to the Avely UFO abduction. So more people would just go listen to it because it was just great. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Get out of here, haters. I was pretty surprised when Alex starts talking about a family whose parents, like mine, had moved from East London to the outskirts of Essex. Then he starts talking about where they were driving. It's exactly where my parents live and where I grew up, albeit 30 years after the story occurred. My school even had a trip to Bruges like the daughter went to in the story. Several of my parents, <laughs> several of my friends' parents have lived in this area since the 60s, and it really hasn't changed much except getting busier as it's now part of Greater London instead of Essex. It's a super normal conservative area, pretty well off as people commute into London for work. Definitely not very common for people to be vegetarian slash vegan. Even now, few eating places uh, have many options, and it's definitely a majority conservative area historically, so the, th so the sudden ideology change would definitely make them seem quite unusual for the area. Oh, that's some good insight, actually. Okay, yeah, that's actually really good to know. I know the country lanes where the alleged abduction took place, and they are full of sharp turns and aren't well lit at night. With regards to the green mist, it's very rarely foggy or smoggy around here, completely not something you would see here, and none of my friend's parents have heard of anything like okay, it. That's good to know, because that's where my brain went when the story was going. Was like, it feels like fog. It would just that's be what fog. Michael said, too, yeah. While it's cool that I know the area, the coincidences don't end there. My parents have actually had a UFO sighting in that exact area. It happened in around 2006, so quite a long time after the Avery abduction. They were driving home from a friend's birthday dinner when my dad spotted some strange lights in the sky. My mom started watching them too as they both discussed what they could be. I remember that I remember them describing it to my brother and I when I when they got home and they also retold the story to me after I arrived at their house after my flight and then I made them listen to the episode. That's a, thank you very much. Job well done. That's how we grow, you know, share it with everybody. That's what I love to see. Uh, that's called investigative reporting also. That's yeah, damn right. My mom loved it uh, and loves sci-fi, paranormal stuff, et cetera, even true stuff. Uh, that's an added, added uh, editorial by Alex, uh, even true <laughs> stories about green stones. She was hooked on William Shatner's weird or what show and shitty American true crime shows. She, so many of those dudes. She's definitely a Mathis. <laughs> yes. I, that's like the first time I've ever heard somebody being a Mathis in one of these stories. <laughs> My dad is completely the opposite and thinks you are all insane, even Jesse. Ha ha ha. Anyway, back to the UFOs. Yeah, well, he is insane. It is. <laughs> they describe the lights as three white spheres of light, too big for a star or planet. 
Plus, they were, quote, dancing around each other. They described them as stopping and starting, as well as chasing each other back and forth, almost like they were playing leapfrog. They definitely seemed to be independent objects, not joined together. It was late, around midnight, so completely dark. My parents said they couldn't tell how far away they were, but they definitely seemed to be following them, and they saw them right over our neighbor's house once they arrived home. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me your father is making fun of us, but he saw this shit and is just like, meh, that's insane to me. That means it must be super true. I mean, I guess so. They called our babysitter to take a look at them, and she was equally shocked and had no idea what they were. She still doesn't know and remembers them now. I asked if they were sure they didn't just think it was following like the moon sometimes appears to, and they both said that it was a very different kind of following, moving to different parts of the sky despite them driving in a straight line. They saw them following for around 25 minutes, and they said that the UFOs disappeared after around 10 minutes since they got home. If it was just my mom who saw them, I would not be convinced at all. Her eyesight is shitty, and she has a wild imagination. God damn. Love it. Hopefully she doesn't hear this. Plus, she already believes yes. in aliens, watches way too much of this stuff on TV, and also has several has had several ghost encounters in her life. See, that just sounds like somebody who had some encounters that were confusing and just has been looking for answers the whole time. Right. However, my dad also seeing it and having the same story gives it a bit more credibility to me. He doesn't believe in anything remotely paranormal. He's not interested in it at all and is the last person I would expect to have seen a UFO. He said that if he saw it now, he would assume it's a drone. Because it was 2006, he doubts it would have been that. We aren't uh, cl close to any active airfields or airports, etc. I feel I should add, they both don't really drink. Dad was driving, so drank only water, and mom can't drink too much because it makes her sick. There, I get it that. was a pretty clear night, but pollution here is kind of bad, so we don't see too many stars. My mom did report the sighting to a government, and there are some other reports not too far from us around then, but it's not very easy to tell from the info you can access about them. I don't know why they didn't think to take a photo or video. We definitely had cameras in a camcorder, but they just didn't think to. Clearly, mom didn't learn to get evidence from all the shows she's watched over the years. I've had a search through the government UFO report records, uh, sorry, government UFO report records between 1997 and 2009 for other sightings in our area, and there are quite a lot, all reporting round lights, ranging from orange to white, and always more than one, moving around with stopping and starting. This is pretty interesting, especially as there aren't a huge number of reports made yearly. Average is only about 30. Still? That's still, I mean, that's a lot. Per year? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess you're right. For UFO sightings. Still, there are tons of things that can explain these sightings, and lights are pretty standard as UFO sightings go. Thought as a bonus, I would include two of the more unusual reports I came across. Said that there was a spacecraft with aliens, the greys sitting on top of it, above the bungalow, and, quote, a man slash alien walked in and laid on the witness's quilt, then whooshed through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry the post was so long. It wasn't that long. I've never been a good storyteller. You were a fine storyteller. Hope you at least find it interesting. I did, and I'm sure Mathis did too. And I'm sure everybody did. I, I did too. Yeah, it's fascinating because uh, the fact that they didn't take any pictures or video, normally I, I, that is like annoying and frustrating. But it, my friend uh, who's been, I don't know if I've said this story on the show, I've kept meaning to. Um, he's been my friend since I was like 13 years old. I've known this man for like 25 years. And at some point uh, in his life, right when he's like uh, early teens, he said he was in the car with his dad and his older sister, who would, would have been like a junior in high school at that point, and him in the back seat. They were going home after seeing a movie, I think he said. And on the way home, in front of them, they saw a, a, what, they did, what he says, like a UFO, a light like zipped in, and it moved weirdly, like in a, in a nonsensical way for about five minutes. And then it zipped off. And he said, his dad looked to him, he's like, did you guys see that? And they both said yes. And then my friend, his name's Dave, he just, he goes, I remember seeing, I remember thinking like, huh, UFO. And then not really thinking much more than that. And not, he goes, I didn't really remember that until he was listening to one of the episodes talking about UAPs. And then he told me the story uh, when we were uh, gaming one night playing, I think Dark Tide. And I was like, it's crazy that you saw that. Even at 13 or 14, we're like, huh, a UFO. And then just kind of like, didn't like, care. Yeah. It wasn't a thing. Like, it's so bizarre. And I just. Well, but you know, some people aren't Mathesis, you know? That's true. That's true. It's awesome that your, that your parents saw that all in the same area, though. I love that that all happened in the same area as the actual encounter. Yeah. That's the best part about it. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a really, I mean, I've, I, I, I had never heard of the Avery UFO abduction really until you went through it. And I, it's like, when I, I want to read into it more because it's probably one of my favorite ones that I've heard in a while because of just like so detailed, it's detailed. And now we have 
you know, f- f- listener evidence that there's still more going on. And like, there's- I should send you the, uh, I should send you the articles there. There's even more in those weird, uh, like regression. Yeah, please. Hypnosis sessions. That just see, it's just so similar to all the other stuff. Like the thing you were saying about the meat cleaver. Yeah. That thing, like all, like lots of stuff like that. Weird, bizarre details that do not fit, make sense and seem nonsensical all the way. Around. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right. This next one is a, a particular user's experience that they have uh, that they've had over time on Highway 20. Uh, it's simply titled Weird Experiences I've Had on Highway 20. This is from <laughs> Chaluminati Shion. Uh, we'll just call him Shion. Uh, and they, yeah, there's a, a, a few experiences they've had that are just fascinating and interesting to look at. So uh, let's begin with this. Hi, let's say, just say my name is Shion. A little backstory might be needed before we jump in. I'm currently 26 and the youngest of my siblings. My sister is 20 years older than me, and my niece is a year older than me. This might clear up any confusion moving forward. There is a road between the town I lived in growing up and the town my sister lived in called Highway 20. It's pretty twisty, turny kind of road, one that is prone to accidents, and in my case, lots of nausea. Oh, girl, I feel you. I am so easily motion sick. I would just be, I'd vomit everywhere. It's why <laughs> VR is amazing and disappointing at the same time. I just can't enjoy it for it's too long. It's just, we're just not there yet, we're are not we? There you yet. know what I mean? Yeah. Give it 10 more years. So starting with their first experience, this first event takes place when I was about 10 years old. My sister calls up our mo- uh, calls our mom, telling her that my niece wants to stay the night and asking if our mom can come pick her up. It's already pretty late, dark outside, but my mother, the ever doting grandmother, agrees after asking me. And so we get ready to go. We stop at the local grocery store to get a water uh, for the car ride since I get car sick. I'm waiting for the car as my mom runs in to get me a bottle of water and it starts raining, which is normal for, for, for where I live. But then I see a helicopter, and I immediately get this bad feeling, and I had the urge to let my mom know when she got back, feeling like if I didn't tell her, something bad might happen. My mom gets back in a timely fashion, and I let her know as soon as she's in the car that I have a bad feeling and we need to be careful on our way to, our, to my sister's house. My mom, being the spiritual type, believing in paranormal, extraterrestrial, supernatural, etc., took what I was saying to heart and agreed to proceed with caution. So we're driving on Highway 20 when a deer pops up, and my mom slows down. She looks at me and says, quote, I almost swerved, but then I just remembered your warning. That wasn't even the weirdest part, though. The deer looked straight at us, bowed its head like it was thanking us, then calmly (laughs) walked back to where it came from. It was both incredible and a bit scary. That could just be a deer being like, Thank you for not killing me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be like, oh, shit. Okay, got to go. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? I'm more curious about the helicopter because yeah, you, of course. you saw the helicopter. Could you hear it? Was it making noise? Because a common UFO sighting is silent helicopters that are flying really low where you should be able to hear them. Is the, is the, idea, is the idea with this that there was a helicopter chasing a skinwalker through the forest <laughs> yeah that's what it was that's what the deer was thinking like is that what we're is that what we're circling around i think so she actually you like think? continued to the to let the skinwalker wreak terror on the town nearby what you should have hit that thing no you should have hit the deer no what no what don't get in a mix up with a freaking skinwalker don't even let the skinwalker know you're there if you can help it Helping a skinwalker helps you live. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. I see. You think they operate yeah. on like a Wookiee life debt system? I think they operate on a, if you fuck with me, I will eat you probably unless you happen to accidentally save my life. All right, yeah. All right. That's fair. Well, let's see what this next uh, event is like. This happened about a year later on the same road, uh, 11 years old now, and we're on our way to visit my sister. Stupidly, I decided to watch Hancock on my portable DVD player while on the road, even though I'm prone to car sickness, but still a fun Will Smith superhero movie I have seen. And I still don't tell me you could watch Hancock when you're 11 years old. That makes me feel elder. Oh, that does make you kind of, that doesn't remind me of my age a little yeah. bit, a little bit. I saw Hancock in the theaters. All right? yeah. That was a good one. And would you know it? I got nauseous. What a shocker. <laughs> so my mom pulled over into a pullout so I could get out and walk around, maybe vomit if I needed to. But there it was again. I had another bad feeling. So I said to my mom, Mom, I think you should pull the car forward more to the end of the pullout. She looked at me and nodded her head and started pulling forward. The moment she was at the end and stopped, a semi-truck came rushing into the pullout area and would have totaled our small pickup truck should my mom not have gone forward more. I was about less than a foot away from where the truck, uh, from the truck as it pulled beside me and lucky not to be hit. Maybe the, 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 maybe it's less helicopter more when you get nauseous, you get psychic premonitions. powers. Yeah, you start. It's like the first act of like a teen pg-13 teen thriller about like developing some latent psychic powers it's called like awake 
or something like what that. Kind of, what channel would that play on? Like UPN, like the old. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. UPN. Yeah, like the old like, UPN. That sounds too dark for a Disney Channel movie. Yeah. No, that's like, uh, like before there was like the CW, like DC verse when it was just like yeah, there was UPN. edgy shit. Yeah, that's it. I, I like that. Well, let's, let's see if the third one is more nausea inducing. Thank you to Aura Frames for sponsoring today's episode. And you heard me talk about it last time. I'm going to tell you again. I'm just not even reading the paper they gave me. I love the Aura Frame I had. I genuinely, truly do. I've been, you know, filling out my home the more I've lived in it. It's only been two years, and that's... There's still so much more I'm looking to do to make this house just feel even more like my space. And having picture frames is something I had as a kid, but I just don't have photos. I don't print out photos. I don't take photos physically. I don't have them... I just don't usually do the whole photo thing. It's too much of a hassle and I don't really think about it. But I take a lot of photos on my phone, like all the time. And yeah, it's nice to look at them on my phone, but what if I want to get them up on the wall or on my bookshelf? Well, that's where Aura Frames comes in and it's awesome. With an app, you can simply upload the photos that you've taken and you can even change how often they change, if they change at all, if you want to upload videos or GIFs onto it. And you can tell the frame just exactly how you want it to operate. For me, I just have every picture slowly fade out and fade into a new one every two minutes and it keeps things fresh and as more photos i take i love the more that i have up on the frame to rotate through and let's be real they're mostly just pictures of my cat there's a reason it was named the best digital photo frame by Wirecutter, the strategist and selected as one of oprah's favorite things you know oprah she loves things our frames are guaranteed to make mom or grandma smile this year for mother's day too and right now aura has a great deal for mother's day Listeners can save on the perfect gift by visiting AuraFrames.com. That's AuraFrames.com. Use code CHILL to get up to $30 off, plus free shipping on their best-selling Carver Mat frames. The end deal's on May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you again to AuraFrames for sponsoring today's episode. All right, the final event that I can remember on this road. This uh, event happened around the same time as the second one, except we were heading home from my, from my sister's. I believe it was Thanksgiving, and so we were uh, leaving late, and it was dark out. While driving, my mom started slowing down significantly, and I was confused. I asked her why she was slowing down, and her reply was strange. She told me, quote, because there's a horse and a wagon in front of us, which confused me even more because I didn't see anything except for for fog in the woods surrounding the highway. See, if this was my mom, I'd be like, did you take your meds, mom? Because... I, you, I know you've seen a monkey riding a donkey before, and it's not there. So I, I would be very nervous. We were relapsing. <laughs> little window into little window into M- Mathis's youth. That's that's a tease for for cryptid tales or whatever. Yeah. You said you're gonna do on a, on the on the Patreon. Oh, it's coming. Tales from the crypt. Uh, I'm excited. Tales from the crypt. Uh, I told her I didn't see anything and asked her what she was talking about, but she was convinced that there was a horse and a wagon in front of us, the old ones back in pioneer days. She could see it clear as day, and then it disappeared in front of her eyes, and she had to pull over to process what just happened. What? To this day, I'm disappointed I couldn't have witnessed it, and also curious about what she was seeing, whereas she's convinced she saw a residual spirit of an an event long past. Anyway, those are some experiences I had. I hope they were interesting to others out there. But she does have one more bonus event before we wrap up the story, but we'll get to that in a second. Oh, good. Okay. First thing, she didn't get nauseous. And she didn't have any powers. I want you to notice that. That reminds me of uh, like there's I remember there's like a famous story of two. I think they're English women in France and they're in at the beach in Normandy and they like walk out one day in the 80s and they like witness the landing at D-Day. Yeah, there's. I want to do a full episode on time slips because like there's a lot of stories. Kind of, like that. Kind of a wild kind of a kind of a out of fashion thing to report but something that used to be reported in the news uh like as much as like flying saucers and shit there's still a ton of people who like post it but but now you just see it on like reddit and stuff instead of like mainstream like weird things that make no sense like they stepped into a a shop for clothes and suddenly they were in like a hat shop with like people that looked like they were dressed up in the 60s that's way cooler though than what's on reddit right now which is just like why are there people that are suddenly famous people that i've never heard before what alternate universe are they from? It's like, dude, you're just you're just old, bro. You're just getting old. That's all. Yeah. It is. <laughs> alternate you're universe just not getting from. marketed to anymore. I'm sorry. I know. It, <laughs> I know how it feels, man. But you just you're probably about 35. Is that right? Did I guess that right. It happens. See, that's why you got to yeah. stay young like me. Just like follow the trends, you know? Yeah. Stay young. 
What are you, what's, what's... I'd say I never left the mental age of 17. What's like a hot thing you picked up this week, man? What's like new? Hot thing that I picked up? I'm It's just Jedi Survivor. That's all I've been doing, dude. That's, I don't have free time for anything else. So you're just, that's you're still doing. just doing the nerdy stuff. You're just doing yeah, the yeah, modern, yeah, yeah, the yeah, current all, nerdy yeah. stuff. Because that, because that stuff. It's not like all, cool it, new stuff. You're just doing well, like. No, the, but like what other, like what, what else, what other hobbies do I have other than this and video games? Really? I don't watch movies. I don't really read comics. You know what I mean? Yeah, you certainly don't watch so any in, movies. That's yeah. <laughs> but we've been watching more. Okay. Uh, anyway. That's true. Right. Anyway, f- 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 weird that your mom saw it. I- I'd be curious if she-, she-, she saw anything more. I think it's a time slip. I agree with your mom. That might be. That might be a time slip. Here's her bonus event. It was when she was about 13. I had this green light hanging lamp in my room that we got from a yard sale. I hung it above my bed. Uh, within the first week of having it, I started having weird dreams. Then as the weeks progressed, the weird dreams became scary dreams that would wake me up and I'd be covered in sweat. However, after a month had passed, something happened to me for the first time that, was ne- that has never happened since. I had what I believe was sleep paralysis. I woke up terrified. I felt a weight on my body. My room was distorted in green light and shadow. I couldn't scream for my mom. I couldn't move. I just laid there tell- terrified. That is like every it's, single box of sounds of very much like it. Yeah. Sleep paralysis is exactly what that sounds like. Only a minute or so had passed before everything was right again, and I was able to move. I started crying uncontrollably and had called for my mom. I asked her to take the lamp out of my room and get rid of it because I, had, had t- I told her there was something evil in it, something wrong with it. She disposed of it right away, and ever since getting rid of the lamp, nothing like that has ever happened to me again. It honestly sounds, to me, I'd be like, that's kind of a coincidence. It sounds like you were just having a week of night, a couple nightmares, which could indicate stressful shit happening in your life. And then sleep paralysis pro- is just, yeah, that's what it's like. You can't move. It feels like you're being sat on by somebody, or, you know, sometimes people see things that are sitting on them, which might explain why the distorted you were seeing distorted weird light or you have latent psychic abilities that are being triggered by feelings of nausea and traumatic experiences you know comics better than i do is there somebody in there that pukes or nausea is like part of their powers tons tons that's unfortunate for all of them there's some there's like some gross x-men that like it's like like kind of like 90s gross out powers but then there's also lots of just like psychics and stuff who like get ill when they have you know some kind of premonition you really got to watch the x-files you really like <laughs> you just have to watch the x-files that's it i'm that's like I'm every, every time you ask me something about media i'm like it's in the x-files you're every yeah, dream you are a time displaced person who was born to live through the the seasons of the x-files airing at this time i should have been in my 20s in the 90s yeah. is what you're saying instead of being like 10 you should have been gen x bro I guess so. I guess I just wasn't. I want to be the X Man that stuff. his power is people forget him when they look away. That's a guy. I know. I know that's yeah. a guy. I'm being serious. That's like a, you yeah. could be like the ultimate spy. Yeah, he was. Uh, he's he's a uh, Juggernaut's partner in the police force, and that uh, sounds hilarious. It's, it's great because he's like Juggernaut's handler too. It's good stuff. <laughs> I assume explain to Juggernaut every time who he is when he's like sees him. They're like your partner. He's like who? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah that's great oh i gotta read that just that bit just because that sounds hilarious um that's all of the over her experiences yeah if you get nauseous and something happens again i uh i think you should uh tell us about it yeah thank you for sharing i always i always love somebody sharing an experience that like reflects on their own connection to something because i think that takes a lot more bravery so shout outs to you all right so this one is one I've been one I've been waiting really I've been really excited to use on the show. Okay. This is one that's had a ton of actual just people talking on it because of how weird and creepy it is. Like comments on the actual thread. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send this to you in the chat. I'm interested to see which one it is because I usually I usually I'm pretty I'm a pretty good lurker of the of the Reddit. I, I commented on this one uh, for sure. Okay, here we go. This is from Poltergeist Music. My mother is contacting me through our Echo Show. By the way, I'm going to be talking about the Echo right now. So if you yes. are an Amazon oh, person. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you have us on speakers, your Echo is going get to be ready. getting triggered a lot. Uh, so this is a bit of a lengthy post, but bear with me. This, is me. this has me freak the hell out as it has my partner too. Some backstory. My mom passed on December 26th, 2021. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I was the person who found her dead and reported it to the authorities. My mom was sick for a long time and eventually her illnesses gave in. She wasn't the best parent, but definitely not the worst. She did promise me that if there was anything after this life, she would let me know. 
She believed in God despite believing in the paranormal too. I think you can believe in both, man. I think you can. I think we've said that before, but like if God has created this, he can, if it like truly, then he created every Chupacabra level. can believe in God yeah, too. Like you he, never know. He, he's the creator of all things. Yeah. Last night, my sister and I were talking on the phone about the house we signed on together with my mom is getting forward, foreclosed on. We talked about how our mother has wronged us in our life and didn't give us a fair chance as kids. We always had her brothers living with us, and when it wasn't her brothers, it was her boyfriend. Well, last night, our Echo Show recorded audio because it has been activated, but we were in the living room, and the Echo is located in our bedroom. You can hear clear as day her voice say Echo as provided in the audio here. Uh, all right, let's listen to, I'm going to listen to the un, uncleaned up one first, I think, the original. Oh, that's very clear, first of all, in that first one. Holy shit. Even in the original, it's very clearly a human voice saying echo. That's true. Let me I'm gonna hear the cleaned up one yeah. now. The clean one, it's even clearer. Yeah, wow. It just sounds like a woman's voice going echo. It really does. Not even a minute after we got this audio right behind it, followed by me in the other room saying, we always had someone living with us. And then, so the first one is what the, uh, the, the supposed like ghost voice. The second one is the... The idea is to, 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 to like prove that it's not their voice. Yeah, exactly. You can hear both of the, him in the living room. Whoa, whoa, that's what the fuck? It's hard. I, it's hard to understand what it's saying. Uh, I'm going to hear this. I just replayed the first part. Let me... I don't know if I don't know if it's actually saying Dino. What time is bedtime? Like it says here, but it's, it's I can hear that. It's definitely the same voice that said echo. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want to hear the second bit here. Hang on. Yeah, the last part's like, what time the bedtime was it? Like, it's like really I don't know what it's saying, but like you said, it's definitely the same yeah, voice. Yeah, and definitely not. It's yeah, it's definitely not the same voice as the person talking in the second clip. Always had somebody living with us. Yeah, I could hear. Yep, you can hear him in the other room. Always have somebody living with us. Clearly, a totally different vocal quality. Yeah, yeah. Now you can hear the difference between the voices. We never even mentioned the echo. The only thing I can think of for the Dino, what time is bedtime? Being related to a movie I loved as a kid, she constantly told me about. She always got mad when I brought up her faults as a parent, especially when the people always came to live with us. Uh, here's a link to show that the echo can pick up who is speaking and that it doesn't even register a voice attached to these. Okay. Oh, you're seeing what the echo translated it to. Interesting. The echo sees, yeah. So the echo can tell whose voice is talking when, and this one isn't yep. connected to a voice. And it also just doesn't recognize the voice. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. What's, and then, yeah, you can go down, you can see Madeline. Yeah, you can see yeah, how it yeah. normally looks, yeah. So just so you guys can reference the voice, I have a clip from a local news channel where my mom was interviewed. In the clip, she was distressed and worried about her brother in jail. You can hear her cadence and enunciation of things. This is per uh, fantastic. I want to hear this. This is exactly what I was going to ask. If he catches it, he will die. He's not a violent criminal. He didn't commit a violent crime in any way. So there's no reason why he should die in jail. A hundred percent, it sounds yeah, that, like Yeah, okay, so that's a good, good listen. I definitely think it sounds I don't think we're right about Dino what time is bedtime in terms of like I don't think I don't think that Echo has it right. Somebody or said it sounds more like yeah I know yeah. but now it's bedtime. Like I know but now it's bedtime. bedtime yeah, part. exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Something like that. Uh yeah, that's perfect. I think it's I think it might just be saying something else. I think whatever that voice is, I think it's saying something besides Dino what time is bedtime. Yeah, it's fucking weird. So if you scroll down in the comment section uh, his girlfriend actually posts, who's part of the story. Uh, she says, hi, girlfriend of OP here. I don't normally believe in this kind of thing. I think I'm spooked by the paranormal and would rather brush it off to believe it's all fake. I've always found it fascinating, but never actually believe it to be fully true. But after hearing her voice, I literally got chills. I couldn't say anything. I could not explain it to be anyone else's voice. My brain immediately recognized it to be her voice. If anyone is doubting the paranormal, I think that's okay. I think it has to happen to us personally to get really the, oh crap, it's real feeling. I agree with you. Like a lot of people need it's such a fantastical thing to hear another person experience that there's no way to understand it unless you experience it yourself. He goes on later down with an update. I can copy paste this update unless you see it. I see that too. Yeah, okay, yeah. read here. from the update. Yeah, so update with new audio from the very first occurrence we brushed off. So uh, my girlfriend and I 
have been trying to debunk this as much as we possibly can. I'm still sifting through the audio, trying to do whatever I can to make sense of whatever it's saying. These are some of the audio clips of the first time it happened unedited. I'm still trying to clean them up, but it's hard. Isotope RX isn't even picking up a vocal track. It's just picking up noise and boosting the mids and the EQ where the human voice usually sits the best. I'm trying my best to clean these up as possible. I'm having to work down to the exact frequencies. I'm wondering if it's a frequency wavelength that has been manipulated to form this audio from energy. Which would be kind of an explanation as to why people, or one of the reasons people use what the spirit boxes as like a way to, to use that. Exactly. Uh, these tools work great for a human voice, but with it not detecting anything, it's pretty much useless besides a few tools in the, RH, uh, in the RX package. Here's the audio that we discovered when this all happened. Like I said before, we didn't realize it stored audio clips, and it's trippy as hell. If you can make it out, please share what you think it is. Echo play for something headphones. I can definitely hear... Is definitely some... I can hear echo the clearest on there i don't i i'm not 100 percent on them saying headphone yeah I can't it, it, it doesn't it doesn't sound necessarily like how everybody says the word headphone but let's be real if there's no one there and it's picking that up that's a voice that's that's a very clear voice that's absolutely a voice and then the last bit he he linked is audio it played after the echo went off that my girlfriend was able to capture from facebook messenger when she sent it to her family It's what is that? Is that is that the weekend creeping? Yeah, I think so. But it's definitely like fucked up. But it's all fucked up yeah. sounding, which is kind of spooky, also in its own way. So the the read the next part after because that's the, that gives some context as to why uh, this. Yeah, this is a song that I would sing all the time around my mom, mainly because it has such a catchy rhythm and melody. Just one of those things where I can't really help myself. Lol. We're still digging to try and find more stuff. We have to record it into an audio clip from our phones and then convert it. It takes time. I appreciate the questioning too. I'm convinced the dino what time is bedtime might be Daniel what time is bedtime. I'm going to go ask my neighbor if anybody there is named Daniel uh, just to help try and debunk it. Since then, it hasn't gone off from what we've heard or seen. Pretty anticlimactic, but that's the truth. Thanks again to everybody who has commented and offered some insight. Wild. That's so fucking cool. I don't under, like, I don't know what to say about it other than like, it's creepy. And that's like, that's another Holy Grail style audio recording when you're talking about ghosts or paranormal and stuff. What are your thoughts, Alex? Because you look lost in, in thought. I was reading one more comment that said that the Echo show was, was gifted after their mom passed. So there's no chance that the audio that's being picked up is like leftovers. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, I love thinking like if there's something after, I'll prove it to you. Interesting, man. Like very interesting. I, look. I'm not going to say, yes, that's the voice of your mother, because I no, obviously that's not for me to say. Right. But it definitely sounds like a voice. And it definitely like after looking at the clip of of her talking on the news and listening to those clips of that voice, they sound like they could be the same person. I agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I'll say as a non-expert. That's as far as I'm willing to say. But that's very I got chills. Yeah, it's creepy. I got, I got goosebumps from it. So incredible. If that helps. I got goosebumps. You got me. <laughs> if you, if you come one. back with an update, uh, please throw a new post up. I want to know. Do do a little uh, do a little uh, EVP sesh. This might be the best evidence we've ever heard from listener stories in, in any way. So far. the one I'll never forget is that picture that that dude sent me. Oh, the, the weird dude in a suit behind the glass. Yeah. From the live show. Somebody was asking about that earlier. We can we can repost that. I, I know that's in the subreddit. I know it's in the subreddit somewhere. That's crazy. I love I love that story. I love all the stories we had today. Oh, excuse me. I don't know why I'm getting wrecked. Like, Jesus Christ. I'm on the coffee starting to wear off. Um, no, but that, that's great. I mean, we've got other stories I wanted to get to, but we're, you know, kind of at the point where we wrap the episode up. And this is a nice chill episode anyway. I got some UFO talk in, some really fucking cool stories with some interesting evidence. Enjoy them. it while you can, folks. Enjoy it while you can. Next week, he returns. we're going straight to hell. Is that right? Damn right we are. But maybe not. Do we know? Do you? Do I know who this is already? I don't know if you know who this is. Like. Did you already tell me who this is? You know, I, I, I kind of in, in 2022, what I would consider, I laid the foundation of like the big names that most people know in true crime, and as well as some smaller ones that were just fun for me, like Boone Helm, because that was story was That's fucking a crazy great. fucking story, dude. I loved it so much. Oh but now God. it's time to dip your big toe in a little deeper into like what I consider the next step. Do you want a name? Do you want me to give you a name? I mean, is that 
Kosh, is that done? Do we do that here on the on the show, or do we always? Sometimes I do. We can do it on the mini sode. We can we can we can tease it on the mini sode actually, which is what we're about to go do. Patreon.com slash Silmanity Pod. You'll you'll all get to hear it, but it won't be as worth it. It won't be as <laughs> you, 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 there will be no surprise left. You will already know. Yeah, you're gonna be like seven months behind. So yeah, so you might as well just come support the show. You know what I mean? It's like pretty cool to do, and it helps us. You know, it helps us do all kinds of new stuff. It's great, and you get free stuff for it. That's cool. Patreon.com slash Chilmanity Pod. Thanks for sending in your stories. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Chilmanity Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by the... I don't know who they are. There's two. One. Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer. No. Neo and Trinity. No. I don't understand, and I probably never will. Let me just tell you right now that there's two. Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. I'm telling you, I think he literally just looked up famous duos. Cheech and Chong. And has been going through the list ever since. I'm trying to dig deep. Which one of you is uh, Dick Powell? Me? Your name's Jesse Cox! <laughs> I want to love you. I want my mind. I want to love you. I want my mind. Everybody. Welcome back to the Illuminati Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by Alex and Jesse. Like a shooting star across the sky that's actually a UFO.